With make or break peace talks on the conflict in Ukraine underway this week, a senior Russian politician arrived at the European Parliament to put Moscow's position. To a parliament, it should be noted, which only last month condemned what it said was Russia's aggressive and expansionist policy towards Ukraine. Alexei Pushkov is the chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the lower house of the Russian Parliament, the Duma. Europol TV asked him first what new he was bringing to the table, given the view of the EU's new foreign policy chief, Federica Mogherini, that the EU's strategic partnership with Russia is over. Um, at this point, uh, it's uh, extremely important to maintain a dialogue, because even if we heard from Mrs. Mogherini that the strategic partnership is over, uh, Russia is not over and the EU is not over. They still exist on the same continent and they are bound to have uh, some kind of relationship. We should now uh, escape uh, a possible uh, divide between Russia and Europe, a divide that would be ir irrevocable, which will uh, start a new Cold War. And to my mind, the uh, moment today uh, is mostly important for uh, finding uh, a uh, quick answer to what is happening in Ukraine. We have to stop the war in Ukraine. And this is exactly what uh, Vladimir Putin and Mrs. Merkel and François Hollande are trying to do. And I have hopes that they will succeed. Do you think on Wednesday uh, that Russia will accept the Minsk agreement as it was signed and agreed in September last year, including all of the provisions uh, on demilitarized area and the withdrawal of troops and equipment? I think that what has been discussed in uh, Kiev and uh, in Moscow uh, with Vladimir Putin is a modified version of the Minsk Agreement. Uh, the Minsk Agreement uh, has been challenged by the developments on the ground, uh, and not only by the insurgents, but also by Kiev's actions. So I think that the three leaders in Moscow discussed how to uh, make a new version, I would say, of this Minsk Agreement, and how to uh, build uh, some kind of uh, understanding on the basis of this new version. What do you think about the possibility of the Americans beginning to send or sell arms to Ukraine? I think that's uh, a high probability that they will do it. I think it's extremely dangerous because that's how the Vietnam War has started for the United States. First they sent weapons, then they sent military advisors, then they sent troops to protect military advisors, and then they sent troops to fight the Vietnamese. So I, I think it's uh, an extremely dangerous path, which um, maybe the United States do not comprehend. Uh, there are a lot of people in the U.S. who still want to fight everywhere, you know. Uh, two years ago they wanted to bomb uh, Damascus, now they want to send armaments to Ukraine. So there are trigger-happy people there like Senator McCain, and I don't think it will serve uh, European security. What's your reaction to the prospect of a new round of sanctions, particularly with the Russian economy in the state that it is at the moment? Well, I think that the uh, poor uh, shape of the Russian economy is uh, slightly overestimated in uh, Europe. I think uh, Russia has some reserves. It can go on for some time on those reserves. I also think that there is a very deep national cohesion today. Um, I would say that Russians are being pressed from outside, so they tend to be more uh, united than they used to be before. And um, finally, I think that if Minsk uh, the new Minsk agreement works out. I don't think that the sanctions will be adopted because in, in this case, if, if there is an answer, then why adopt the sanctions? Many people said at the time of the old Minsk agreement that it was um, a tr strategy, a tactic on behalf of uh, President Putin to buy time uh, and consolidate and increase military gains on the ground. The insurgents also accuse Kiev of uh, trying to use uh, uh, the armistice in order to regroup their forces and to uh, rearm the uh, uh, army. So uh, I think that these accusations are flying from, you know, from every, every quarters. Uh, but uh, Russia uh, maintains that uh, the area of Donbas uh, should be part of Ukraine. The question is not about this. We don't question the uh, territorial integrity of Ukraine concerning Donbass. Uh, what we think should be done is that this area has a status which will be acceptable to the people living there, that they have certain guarantees, that their demands are being met. About 7 million people are living there. We cannot just decide their fate over their heads. Uh, we have to uh, find a solution that will be acceptable to them. If this is done, 
then I think that uh, Ukraine will remain a united country. And one final thought on the same question. To those MEPs here in the European Parliament who argue also that Crimea should be returned to Ukraine, what will you say to them today? Well, I'm afraid that the Crimean issue uh, is uh, not something on which Russia will change its position.